Hello YouTube, I'm Toby. Today we're taking a look at the AMD Phenom 2 X6 uh, 1055T. Now this is a 6 core 6 thread processor on the AM3 or AM2 Plus uh, platforms. It's clocked at 2.8 GHz and it can boost up to 3.3 GHz. Now it was launched in April of 2010 so it's 11 years old and it will definitely show in these tests. It's based on the K10 architecture and it's a 125 watt TDP processor so if you want to play around with it you're going to need some uh, good cooling for it and for a good measure we'll not be overclocking it for this test as I only have air cooling available to me. The system itself we'll be using uh, for this processor will have the uh, RX 560 as our graphics card. It's not the greatest graphics card but it's what I have available at this time and it's been doing fairly well in the uh, previous tests. The motherboard is a generic AM3 motherboard from China. I really can't remember. I believe it's an ASUS board. And we have 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. So without further ado, let's get into some uh, benchmarking.
Alright, so the benchmarks are complete and to be quite honest I thought this processor would do a little bit better um, than what we actually got. The, um, the problem we have with this processor is its low uh, instructions per clock uh, basically means the cores aren't that um, efficient at, uh, at doing work and it definitely shows in this test. Um, I ran some uh, Google searches and I found out that um, for instance, uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive usually uses two to four threads, so it's very uh, dependent on the instructions per clock and the uh, the power in each of these cores. And the problem we're having is that I had a another Phenom a couple weeks ago, I think, or last week. I really can't remember when uh, the other Phenom, but it was clocked a little bit higher and it was a little bit newer. And it definitely showed that it was running Counter-Strike Global Offensive a bit better than this one, uh, seeing that Counter-Strike Glo Global, uh, Global Offensive cannot take advantage of all the cores um, that are avail available to it. Now for those that are interested, Fortnite, um, from what I could use, uh, find uh, online, it used two cores, two threads, that's pretty much what Fortnite uses, maybe a little bit more. Um, it's just like Counter-Strike Global Offensive, it's very um, dependent on the instructions per clock and the power in these uh, cores. Um, PUBG ran a bit smoother than I imagined, and that's because it can utilize between 4 and 8 threads. So it's a lot better at spreading the load across the entire processor. And Kerbal Space Program, although it can use multiple threads, I found um, but the physics on each spaceship is dependent on one core, which again means that we are very dependent on uh, one one core's ability to do work. Now GTA 5 uh, ran fine actually. Uh, from what I could find, it actually didn't use that many cores, but um, I'm not entirely sure. It's an old game, so maybe it's better suited to a processor of this caliber. But I think we've come to a point now. Um, where these old AM3 processors just simply can't keep up anymore. Um, if you want this processor, sorry, this processor over here to do better, you're gonna have to overclock it a lot uh, in order to get some useful work out of each core in it. So what's this processor good for um, in 2021? Really not a whole lot. Um, I really can't uh, uh, how do you say it? You really can't. It really can't really do anything uh, in 2021 because if you want to use it, if you want something like you know a home theater PC, there are much better better processors available that are cheaper and lower power. This processor uses a lot of power. It's like I, I explained earlier, it has a TDP of 125 watts. That's it's insanely high, uh, especially from 2021 standards. I believe my Ryzen 8 core doesn't even use that, I think that's like 90, 95, that's still a lot, but it's got two more cores and yeah, pretty much over twice as many threads. This is insane, as an insane amount of power for an insane amount of, well, little work it can do. So I really think we are getting to a point um, where these old processors, they're just really hard to recommend for anything. I, th I think they're fun to work with and fun to play with. If they break, that's really not a big issue because they're cheap and readily available, but if you want something that can actually do some work, these are absolute no-go. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching.